Good evening, folks, and welcome to uh, Thursday night's Torpedo Live podcast. Uh, I, my name is Mark Kulak. I'm from uh, King's Landing Sport Fishing and ProjectSalmon.ca, and I'm supposed to have Captain Lucas with me right now, but he's having some tech issues. So uh, I am. Uh, I'm kind of watching uh, the uh, my phone, trying to see if uh, Lucas pops up into the event. Uh, but you know, I didn't want to wait any longer, so I started off the show. And we'll uh, and we'll go from there. So tonight, the plan is to uh, talk about trolling for salmon and trout using one of my favorite um, methods, the trolling fly. If I can catch a, fly, uh, a salmon on a fly, I will do it all day long. It's probably my favorite um, way to uh, to catch uh, to catch salmon. So we'll just give it a few moments. Uh, I see folks are joining right now, which is fantastic, and. Uh, Hoping, hoping I can see if, if uh, Captain Lucas is going to join us in a second. But uh, while I'm uh, while I'm waiting for that, just a friendly reminder: don't uh, don't remember, sorry, don't forget, not don't remember, don't forget to click on that like button and click on the subscribe button. Uh, and uh, sorry, like and like and share button helps us out a great deal. Gets these videos out to more people. So as as I'm doing that, uh, I will say that while I have some information to share tonight on running trolling flies. Um, it, we're also here to answer your questions. I should say, I'm here to answer your questions while I wait for Lucas, hoping that he can solve the technical issues. Um, I'm gonna have to make a note. Uh, uh, but uh, with that, you know, I'm gonna start getting started. So please feel free, put your questions in there and, uh, and we'll go from there. So my apologies. Uh, Lucas's computer is telling him he doesn't have a microphone right now. That's why he can't get connected. So you can actually look at Lucas, but you won't be able to hear him, and that's a bit of a problem. So let's uh, let's see if he's able to get back in here. Um, I'm not sure. And, you know, it's telling me uh, it's telling me that he doesn't have a microphone connected. So that doesn't uh, that doesn't work. So um, you know, Captain Lucas, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but uh, we can't. We're not gonna be able to hear you. So with that, I'm gonna get started. So feel free. Um, let's uh, let's start getting those questions in on trolling flies. But you know, I'm gonna maybe get us started. So let's let's talk trolling flies and when and when I use trolling flies. So uh, when I think about uh, my season, my season does start a little bit later. I'm on the north shore of Lake Ontario, and and therefore you know our marinas don't really open up until early May. And uh, you know a lot of the time when the salmon are out on the south shore on the Canadian side. Um, you know, we can get lots of salmon on a spoon and, and we find, uh, you know, we're not using trolling flies as much for me. Once the, once the salmon really do start coming to the North shore, which really is, uh, you know, middle of May, I'm, uh, I start my season predominantly running spoons and flies. You know, I, I, w I don't actually put meat into the mix. So for me, one of the first baits that I run is the trolling fly. Um, and really, it depends on what I'm looking for, right? So uh, when I'm when I'm when I'm running the flies early season, I'm really running a couple of different types of flies, and it's actually interesting. I've got one question already has popped up, and I'm going to talk about that right now. So the one of the first flies I run is when I'm going for the coho bite, and I run these little guys. That's when I'm running the mini spin doctors. I've got an orange one here. I got a glow with orange dot, and I've got them with uh, with coho flies. So I'm not sure how many folks actually run these small, um, these small uh, spin doctors here with uh, with small flies for coho. I'll tell you, we we call them for coho, but they work exceptionally well for steelhead also. I actually use these all uh, all season long, especially when I'm fishing fishing out the blue zone. But really, you know, I'm running a pretty short leader on these ones. Um, I want to say this is a 12 to 14 inch leader. Uh, what I like to do on here, and I call this the more action approach, you'll see that I've actually removed the standard um, spin doctor snap swivel, and I just put a snap on there. And then from there, I've got a small fly. This is probably about a two-inch peanut fly. I like mine to actually slide on the line, so mine's more of a tube fly. I've got a single bead, and then I run that with usually a size two or a size one treble hook. That would be how I would run. I, that's how I'd run it. So if I think about, you know, I'd be running something like probably for coho. I'd be running this right here. So you, you know, you're so that's a size one. Sorry, let me get the right size here. 
I would be running the size two for coho right here. That's what I would use the torpedo size two for coho. Um, and that is a, I tell you, these things, and I just lost my, oh, here it is. These little, uh, these little spin doctors, they're absolutely deadly. So that'd be the first, uh, the first thing I'd say. Uh, you know, as I, as I look at this, I'm getting some questions coming in. And the first question is, how far off your cannonballs or divers do you run the little spin doctors? Um, so it's interesting. So I'll tell you, <laughs> I've never ran this on a downrigger, ever. Uh, I run these on divers, and I run these on uh, weighted steel and lead core, typically weighted steel. So when I'm running them with a weighted steel, often I find when I'm getting the uh, – when I'm getting the cohos using these little guys here, or the or the steelhead later in the season, I'm getting them in the the top, call it 40 feet. Therefore, it's typically I'm running a 100 weighted steel, 150 weighted steel, or a 200 weighted steel. When I'm running with divers, you don't need you don't need much of a long lead. So you know I'll run a seven eight foot lead. I don't have the I don't have the divers in front of me, but I'll typically run either a clear diver a black diver or sometimes i believe in like a double orange and i'll run a, a bright orange diver but that's how i kind of start my season and like i said these little guys here i'll run them all season long um because uh you know where i fish i can find coho pretty much all season long especially if i go a little bit deeper uh later later in the day and they'll also um, pick up uh rainbow trout all day long steelhead all day long so that'd be the first uh That'd be the first part of how I start fishing for uh, for flies. The second, and uh, you know, and then you know, right around that same time as we start to get into what we call our May long weekend, then we really start getting the king salmon. You know, we got king salmon, we got the Atlantics, we've got steelhead, we've often got browns, and we still got some Lakers mixed in. It's a real mixed bag, and that's where I really go. I go to my go tos now. I go to my go to um, flies, and for me, I'll start by saying, like, if you could see in front of me right now. I have got eight inch paddles every everywhere right now. All over, I've got eight inch paddles. And I see Lucas here, so bear with me. I'm gonna add Lucas to the stream and I hope we can hear me. Lucas, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Wow, we can hear you. Lucas is here, everybody. This is fantastic. No, I can't hear you. <laughs> you can't? No, don't tell me that. Oh, uh, what is going on here? Okay, well, Lucas, I'm gonna get you. We're, we're <clears throat> live right now, so I'm gonna remove you for a second. If you can't hear me so um i'm not sure what's going on all kinds of technical issues we thought we had lucas but we don't um so let's let's go back so when it comes to the eight inch fly uh eight inch flasher that would be my go-to most of the season i do have the 11 inch that i will run and i'll talk about, about that a little bit later and i do have the 13 inch and i'll talk about that a little bit later but when it comes to flies my go-to most of the season is um, is the eight-inch, um, you know, call it uh, standard rotator with a uh, with a standard four-inch fly. Let's uh, Lucas is back again. Let's see if he can hear us. Lucas, can you hear us? I can hear you now. Fantastic. Okay, we can hear Lucas. <laughs> he can hear us. Lucas, I'm uh, I'm live. Where you're live. I just talked all about the, the small little uh, spin doctors for coal. Uh, yeah. Coal. And now I'm talking, and I'm jumping into talking about my <laughs> favorite um, flasher fly combo, the eight inch, uh, that which would be my favorite, you know, like like these ones right here. So maybe sure, and I always I start off the season with those, and then um, I even have some of those smaller uh, six inchers that I even use for brown trout, like a dodger or whatever. But I just use a little peanut fly behind them, like a gold and brown one for like gobies and i put that off the dipsy right in the prop wash and um i even use those early early in the season and as the season goes on they normally get bigger yeah and that's great because you you do you start a lot earlier than me right like i i don't really get started till may because i'm on the north shore our marinas aren't open so i, I think that's really good advice like you're using a lot smaller like fly splasher flies dodger flies um because you're trying to get the browns with them as well yeah, and I normally it depends on the year too and what I'm running. If I'm if I'm running multiple flashers and flies off my downriggers, because sometimes I'll run two off of I run a three rigger spread. So if I run two flashers and flies or flashers and meat rigs, whatever I um 
I normally will keep my leads. I'm seeing a question across the screen here about my leads off the downrigger balls. Um, I normally keep mine uh, about 10 to 20 if I'm running two, um, and very seldom will I go over 20 uh, feet off of the, the, the downrigger balls. Excellent. And uh, question for you. So as I, we got some questions coming in, but I got a question for you. Yeah. When it comes to flies, I think one of the most personal questions about when it comes to running flies is – is your hook set so if you look at mine every single one of my flies that i have here you know this would be my favorite hook set i use there you go the double octopus that is that is my favorite hook set four rot double octopus you know here's the uh here's the new and actually this is a brand new release actually the new uh torpedo octopus hooks four rot but that's my favorite hook set um that you'll see 99 percent of the flies on my boat use that um, yeah and i use yourself, something almost exactly use? like that my um my stinger hook or my my front hook is an octopus hook like that but then i run a treble hook after the beads and when you run a treble hook after the beads lucas uh what size uh torpedo treble are you using using a size one or size two or a one not i I'm not really good with the numbers. I can't remember them, but normally I use the biggest one that that I that I can get my hands on. Um, I've used all three, and I've never really noticed a, a difference in sizes. Um, but I like to run more of a grappling hook style. I want as big, wide of an opening as possible. Excellent. So that you know, it's interesting. <laughs> That's one of the first things I want to talk about, right? The hook set, like my favorites. The double octopus, yours is, I think, what we call more of the tournament rig, right? The yeah, treble yeah. and the uh, the treble and the, uh, the the single octopus. I'll tell you, for those viewers here, if you've not tried either of those two, I'm gonna tell you, you're missing out. You know, when I first started many many years ago, I started with a single treble. It works, but you lose a lot more fish. You start running either like Lucas with the double, the 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 octopus and the uh, the sing, sorry, this octopus and the treble, or like me with a double octopus, you'll get a much better landing ratio. Because my view, and I'm sure, look, because this is why you do it, typically you get one hook in the mouth and one under the chin, and those yep. fish are going nowhere. Yeah, and that's what I found with the treble hook, because I'm getting, if they get that, that octopus hook in their mouth, it, it isn't going to come out. But if it should, or you have a failure, that treble hook is also in its face as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, Lucas, we got some... We got some questions coming in, and for those folks on the watching us, keep those questions coming. But Lucas, maybe uh, talk to us. What's your when you're running an eight-inch flasher? What would be your go-to leader length? So my fly, I so I was always taught twenty inches. Um, I actually fished a tournament probably about six eight years ago, where uh, one of my flies was just going crazy. I use um, ITO flies and. Uh, it was going crazy and we tried the same color ITO fly on the other side of the boat. And just this one was going constantly and shame on me for not putting it next to the other flies. But I realized that that fly was actually 18 inches behind uh, the paddle instead of 20. And so now I'm running mine about 18 to 19 inches approximately. Interesting. So, uh... and I even run that shorter one, even when I'm running, I've run, um, cause I work with ITO flies, Ryan, he, um, he got me, uh, into the five inch flies and the six inch flies. And I'll even run those at 18, 19 inches behind them too. Well, that would make sense too, right? Because they're a heavier fly. So they, they should yeah. actually require a shorter leader yep. to whip them around. And, 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 you know, as you say that, cause I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a three to one guy. So like for me, if I'm running an eight inch flasher, it's a 24 inch lead. Now, what I would say that the 24 inches for me includes the snap and the swivel so it's more probably like yeah so that that's probably a good a good point um because i'm using those little pigtail snap swivels yeah and um those are uh probably another solid inch inch and a half added on to so we're not lead. far we're close but not the same yeah yeah but I, I really truly believe that certain days are the lead length does matter yeah um so you can you can play a lot play around with that too on your own yeah, see if you can, 24 inches is working, see if 18 inches is working. I think it depends on the day. 
Yeah, and you can also speed up and slow down the boat. That's the other thing, right? So I was going to ask yep. you when you when you're running those 18 and 20 inch leads, um, what speed do you like to troll at with that with those leads? I normally always start with 2.5. Um, I have found that earlier in the year in the spring I might bump up to three, um, but I again that's something I play with throughout the day because it could be different day to day. Yeah. Um, so it's but yeah, I'll you're, normally run my right uh, paddles, paddles about 20 feet and then flies about 19, 20 inches um, just to try to keep everything the same so I, I can remember it because I'm an idiot. No, I think you're, I, I agree. Like, I believe consistency is important. So I'd say I'm similar to you when I'm running flies off the ground, <laughs> like, a, like, an inch like this, uh, this mm -hmm. one right here. I'd say um, 20, foot, 20 foot lead, paddle, fly. You know, I've got the panoptics. I can literally see. I've got the panoptics in the flip mode. I can see the downrigger ball. I can see the flash, and I can even see the fly rip, whipping around. It's it's awesome because literally I can see what the fish is doing, and I can actually watch them uh, take the bait many times. Uh, That's so my next makes step. Sense. That's my next big purchase piece, for sure. Yeah, it's it's great, but I'd say the interesting piece is, you know, you're a short lead, fast. I'm a longer lead. I run 24 consistently. And I like to troll at 2.2. So, you know, what you're hearing here, folks, is you got to play with it and test it out because I, I catch a lot of fish. Lucas catches a lot of fish. So they, they both work. I think it just depends on the it depends on the day and depends on the fish. But I do think flies are a lot more forgiving. That's my opinion. And that's why I love flies. Yeah, they are, too, because if you're using, um, you know, cut bait heads and stuff, you might have to bend it. You got to watch. The biggest thing you have to do, whether you're running a spoon, a stick bait, flasher and fly, flasher and meat, is you've got to watch that product working before you send it down. Put it in the clean water next to the boat, put it down about two, three feet and watch it. See what it's doing. Make sure your fly's, you know, looking like it's trying to spin and swim. And um, same thing with a, a, a spoon. You might have, and I've had one or two spoons that you put in the water and no matter what you do, you can't get it to spin. It, it's a bum, bum design or it got uh, bent in the tackle box or God knows what. But you've got to check your check your product before you put them down, because uh, even even if you like, like I said, you get one that starts working really well. You'll notice that when you put that in the water, that one might be spinning slower or faster. And that now you can make your other ones do the same thing. Thousand percent. So, Luke, as we've got some real good questions coming in. So that's and I think they'll probably cover a lot of the stuff that you and I wanted to cover today. So um, first question right here, more of a comment slash question. I tie my own flies. They say to use 50 pound fluoro, but I find it tough to use. Is 40 fluoro still acceptable? It's it's much easier to work with, or is it too risky? Um, what do you prefer? I've got my opinion. I'll share mine in a second. But what do you what do you use for leaders uh, when you're tying flies? So believe it or not, a lot of places around here I can't find 50 pound test. So I've used 40 pound test. Um, yeah, 40 pound test is definitely easier to tie knots. Um, I use the polymer, and when you're using 50-pound test, for some reason, it's really hard to get that uh, nice and tight and snug. Um, I even have some chips in my teeth from pulling on it. Um, but I, I've used 40 and 50, and I haven't had, haven't had a problem with it either. Um, I like the stiffness of the 50-pound. Um, in my mind, I like to see that fly make bigger circles, and I think that stiffer line might do that. Um but a uh, 40 pound is just fine. And again, I, I don't think you're going to lose too many more fish dropping down to 40 pound tests. If anything, you might get more bites because it's less in the water. Yeah. I, I don't think you run fit when it comes to flies. In my opinion, we don't run 50 pound in my opinion, because it's stronger. I think we run 50 pound because it's stiffer. Stiffer. And that right. imparts more action on the fly. So right. my go to is this stuff. Seaguar yep, STS salmon, 50 pound. You know, yep. I'm able to find this. I'd say for those of you that can't find it, um, I, I actually buy it off of Amazon. That's where I Yeah, that's that's what it. I'm going to have to start doing yeah. too. It's, it's, good <clears> stuff. it's just nice that when you need it short time, you can just run to this tackle store and grab yeah. it. The other thing I use, and excuse the big spool, I got a monster spool here of Andy 50 pounds. And this is, this is not fluorocarbon. This is mono. And then I got a small spool of Andy. 60 pounds. I will use that as well um, with my flies. You, you know, I do I do personally think the fluorocarbon is better. 
a um, bit more invisible, but I've used both of those with, with good Yeah, and I have too. I've I've used regular um, uh, Berkeley, big, the big game, the cheap big stuff game, from yeah. Walmart. I've used that and 40 and 50 pound test. Um, and you're going to catch fish on it. I, I agree with you. Fluorocarbon is the way. And if I had my choice, I would do fluorocarbon. But nowadays, when you buy some products, they might not even come with floral. They yep. come with the regular fishing line. And I catch just as many fish on them. It's, yeah, absolutely. Thousand percent. I tell you, years ago, you'd buy a lot of flies. <clears throat> they did not come with fluorocarbon. It was it was monofilament like big game or or yeah. suffix or something like that. You're you're totally right. <coughs> okay, we got some more questions. So let's uh this is um this is actually here's here's one. I think it's a quick one. Would you recommend a conv convector or a cold water reel for three hundred weight steel? If Dakota's too much out of the budget. Well, I'd say uh convector and cold waters work well, and I think they're actually great reels for the recreational guy that's fishing, you know, once, maybe twice a week. Um, you know. I, I, I have a whole bunch of cold waters and convectors from many years ago. They're good, but I find if you use them just day in and day out, you burn them out very quickly. I've got some friends that do use them on charter boats. They're changing the reels every year. So, but if you're, if you're a recreational, they're, they're a great reel. Don't go crazy. Um, what I would say is um, the key piece, in my opinion, if you're going to run a 300 weighted steel, with an, to get enough backer, you need a 55 series in the convector or the cold water. So you need the CV55 on the convector, or I think it's the CW553 on the cold water. We've actually got our our second boat, King's Landing 2. That it actually has cold water CV CW553s uh, for all of all of the weighted steels on those ones. What's your thoughts? I'm impressed on you're remembering all those numbers. I can even remember the numbers of hooks. I'm an, I'm a numbers guy by day, man. So it's, uh, it's, it's what I do. What about yourself? Uh, you know, what's your thoughts on, on, on reels for the, the average, uh, recreational so I use, angler? I use a uh, diosaltus, the 50 series. Um, and I put on braid and then I put on about 50, 75 feet of mono. So I can, um, when I send it out, I can put it on a, uh, planer board release. Yep. Uh, and I like using the brightest green I can find because then that way I can, instead of watching the rod tip bounce, I can actually look for that yellow line stretching behind me and I know it's gone. Yeah, that's there you go, right there. Same, 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 same deal. And I'm able okay. to get 300 on it without a problem. And then, um, you know, I do have the Taloras for the um, uh, the 400s and bigger. Yeah. I go, I go a little bit better, but I understand where money's an option. Yeah, I no, did start. I did start a long time ago when I was brand new at all this. I did get a bunch of saltwater uh, reels, which were cheap. Um, you could put on seven thousand feet of line if you wanted to. It's just, it's horrible because you got to use your fingers back and forth. There's no level wind on them. Um, but I didn't have any money, so you know it was that or or not running with three or four hundred. Yeah, I used I to started. use uh, when I first started way way back. Um, old school <clears throat> Daiwa sea lines that my dad had from when we used to fish uh, in Florida. So yeah, totally agree with you. So big, yeah. big saltwater reels. They didn't even have the line guide, but they were yep. right. So way, way back. Anything you okay. can find that has capacity. Yep. Okay. So we got some other questions coming in and I want to talk about some colors before we go, but let's, uh, let's go through some questions. So Mitch is asking, do you run the fly? So Mylar is streamlined. Or years ago on Lake Michigan, some guys had the mylar was pointing forward, so in the water, so it had a squid action. So I think what he's talking about. This is, <coughs> I got a fly here, so I would consider this to be like a. Here we go. This is like a streamline approach, and then the other way would be when you turn it upside down and almost, you know, kind of make it all poofy. I can tell you, every single one of my flies on my boat is done this way, so it's like yeah. Very, very poofy um, and like I, I like mine poofy as well. Yeah. Poofy's good. I think it, it gets to see better um all the colors of your mylar rather than if you streamline it. I think all the inside stuff is all um pinched in and you're not getting a good uh visual. Yeah, for um, me the only the only ones that are not streamlined from probably not poofy for me is the a streamline of my coho flies. Because the right. way they're built, they're built to actually spread out. That's the right. only ones that right. are not done. Same back. thing for my Twinkies, for my meat yeah. rigs. I, I run those Absolutely. streamlined as well. Thousand percent. Okay. 
We found something <clears> we're, <throat> we're the same on. That's good. Okay. Let's see what else. This is a good question. I, and I, I'm 99% sure we're different here because I know who you used to fly and I know who I used to fly. Tuber bullet heads and why? So for me, it comes right down to what it looks like. In my opinion, I've run them both. I've run both of them and I still have both of them. Um, I like the, the tube because I feel like it cuts the water, maybe makes some noise like a bass fisherman uses a hula popper or whatever. Um, but the bullet head, I think, looks more like, and I even like the bullet heads if they got eyes on them. Um, I just think it looks a little bit more realistic. I don't have any facts to prove that. So for me, I've got four, six, eight, ten, but 12 flies in front of me. There's one bullet head. One. The rest of mine are all tubes. So pretty much I'm a, I'm a tube guy. I, you know, Chris asked, does the added weight and the size of the bullet head affect the movement of the fly? Chris, I don't know, man. Like, I think I think there's many of us that believe it does. But what do we really know at the end of the day, right? Like, So it, everything, changes the, everything changes. Everything uh, changes. The bullet head, the size of the head, the weight of the head, the length of your leader, everything does. And you have to try to – you have to come up with what you're confident with. Bingo. Um, and as soon as you become confident with something and you think something's going to work, you tend to find that stuff working a little bit more often. I, I, that's exactly it. As I say, right, the, the fish will tell us what they want. It can change. You know, my view is if you run it, I used to run a lot of bullet heads when I was trolling a lot of spoons at, you know, heavier spoons at 27, 28. It probably didn't matter. I'm now a much slower fisherman. I, I troll most time between 1, 9 and 2, 3. I like to keep the fly set up light, but that that's why uh, it's to your point. It's finding what works in your spread and what you're confident in. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I've caught fish every which way. Um, I just try to fine tune what in my gigantic head uh, thinks is going to work better. So like you said, you're going to run stuff totally opposite of me. There's going to be days that I can I can't I can't get anything and you're going to go crazy and it's going to be the opposite days I go crazy and you can't get them to run, and yeah. I, I guarantee you if I try to run your program on my boat it might not work as good. And yeah. There's a day out there you're using a specific fly and I try to put the same exact combination, same depth, same speed, and I won't get that thing to go for anything and you've got it going constantly. So I, those I are all things you've got to figure out with your, you know, like I, I think even the boat motor, outboard or inboard or, you know, running two motors or one motor, I think all of that has to play. Um, and we could be in, in this for discussion forever about that. Absolutely. Uh, there's a few more, actually more of this. I got a comment here. You know, Vlad talks, but when we talk about reels, he says the pen squall two size 50 is a great choice as well. Yeah. That's another good reel. Um, Randy's got a question about ninja boards. Uh, I use the ninja boards. You know, it's on the other side of the room now, so I can't grab it. They're uh, they're great boards. Uh, I, I, I I saw them this this year. It's the first time I've seen them. I've never used them. Um, I know we talked a while ago about um, inlines versus big boards. I'm normally not a, a inline board guy, but I am a, a fan of what is easier, and it sounds like these ninja boards with their one-hand release is uh, – is a class act so um I, I will be buying one or two just to try them because i do some days when i need to get you know that stuff out and i'm not running long lines i could just throw one out to try it see if it works uh, yeah, so i'll try no, them i'll tell you for me um for me um i use the i use big boards like lucas when i'm doing my charters most of the time that being said, and I would argue this with anybody, I believe that I fish the busiest strip of water on all of Lake Ontario. It's in front of the city of Toronto, which is probably the most populated city on the lake, um, and it's very, very busy. We joke around that the strip I fish on a weekend is busier than the busiest highway during rush hour going into our city. And so I, I tell you, when it's busy like that in the morning, I can't run the big boards. Like, you see boats cutting off lines and <coughs> it's just a gong show. So, you know, I will often run those ninja boards on a weekend when I need to get out a couple of extra rods because uh, to get the fish in the boat or maybe the fish are a bit uh, a bit deeper. So I want to run a, you know, 350 or 400 weighted steel. And that's when I use the ninja boards because I can let them out 
But if someone gets a bit too close, I can bring them in within a foot or two of the boat. That's where, right. in my opinion, for my fishing, that's where the ninja boards just shine for me. But Yeah, other, you'd love fishing in my water. Nobody's ever around, around you. Yeah. But otherwise, if I can run big boards, I will run big boards every day of the week. Okay. Yeah. So now, I, you know, so actually, we've got some questions coming in that I wanted to ask you. But one question is directed at me first. So... David said, I bought a dozen custom Hotfish 10 flashers. Um, this is a Hotfish 10 flasher right here. They're, they're, they're a newer Canadian flasher, fish shape, 10 inch. But if you, I'm not sure you can see, they've got quite aggressive curves on them. Um, so from, our, from, from three weeks ago from my company, ProjectSalmon.ca, can you please describe its unique action and your best trolling speeds with flies for summer kings? So it's, it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting, David. I would say this uh, this flasher has a pretty aggressive action. Uh, it's been out on the market for two years. I can tell you that I, I will tell you right now. I have mastered fishing with it with a with a meat rig, with a with a meat. And I know we're not talking about meat, but I'll say today with a meat rig, I find it is. Uh, I run a seven or eight foot lead, and I get fish all the time with the hot fish. On the flies, I'm still I'm still learning. I'm playing around with it for flies. That being said, and I, you know, I've got one. It's not here. One's one of my very popular ones. It's um, it's a hot fish, but it's actually got an atomic glow stud behind it. And that one, I have a 28 inch leader on it, and that seems to be the magic for me. It's less about the speed for me because, like I said, I'm a one nine to two three speed trolling guy. For me, it's more about I play the leader. So for me, I'm finding that 28 inch lead um, is working when I. When I first got this flasher, I thought, you know, I'm going to go like an 11 inch, like an 11, what's my 11 inch? I'm going to do something like an 11 inch here. I'm, when I'm running an 11 inch, I'm running a 45 inch lead, but the 11 inch is doing these big moves around. This is a bit, this has got a, a much tighter action. And I was, I was using a 45 inch lead and I wasn't getting bit. I started to shorten that thing down and like I got into that 28 to 32 range and I started to get bites. So that'd be my recommendation for that one. And again, that's testing it before you send it out to see what it's doing, so you know. You got it. Um, because I use a lot of big paddles uh, later on in July, um, and uh, e e each one is different. You know, you got you got those big foots from Spin Doctor. I've used those. Um, again, I like the ITO flies. They're twelve inch paddles. I use those religiously. Um, white with white is my favorite color combination, especially down deep. Um, uh, I'm out of. Uh, Bald Eagle Creek, which is in Kendall, New York, next to uh, Point Breeze, uh, for the one question someone asked. Um, but I like, uh, I'll run a white pa paddle with white fly, whether it's a four inch, a six inch, or a white meat rig with glow, uh, down 100 foot of water almost year round. I mean, other than changing maybe the design, but a white paddle. Normally, I start off again in the earlier part of the year, I'll start out with a 10 inch or an eight inch spin doctor or whatever, white. But then once July hits, end of June hits, I'm using the biggest stuff I can get. Yeah, it's, and so, uh, you know, I've got one here. This is a, you know, a 13-inch fish blade. This one's an Oki Kingfisher. Um, I've got a green and white. This would be something I put down deep. And actually, it's funny you talk about that because I, uh, I've, I put my third rigger back on the boat for this season so I can actually run and have one rigger committed to flies down deep. Um, when you, do you use, do you use something like this for the flies, Lucas? Absolutely. And what, what size, what's, what's your go-to leader length for something like this? If I'm just using a four inch fly, I, I typically, if I'm doing that, I'm going to be running either a vegan rig, which is a meat rig with a six inch fly at the back, or I'm running my four inch fly with the same lead on it. Uh, I, I stick with 20 inches and, uh, no matter what the size of the paddle. Um, interesting. Wow, that's really interesting. I, I um I will run a longer if I start running a, a six inch fly, like a big six inch white fly. It kind of to me looks like meat, so I will run that like a vegan rig with t the Twinkies. Um, and then if I do decide I want to just put one out with clean, run it clean, then it's still going to have the same length as a meat rig would. It's going to be nice and long. Interesting, because I know. Uh... I, I, I've never run a vegan rig. Uh, I was actually at the uh, Niagara Falls show not too long ago having a conversation with someone about that. I, I got to try them this year. But uh, for me, 
like I said, when I run an when I run an eleven inch paddle here, <coughs> I'm running like a forty to forty five inch lead, right? And I find it's a big action. I like that fly to be whipping around. When I'm running the these these thirteen inch, I'm in the fifty five sixty range. So it's interesting, like we're, you know, we're quite different there. Uh, you know, if you're running a twenty inch uh, behind yeah. those, you know, that's almost that's only a little bit bigger than the actual flasher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I um. And I found that, that that works um, works pretty good, actually. And maybe it's because I'm, like, the only one doing that. But that way, because I, I have, well, like we've talked about, I have the vegan rig setups. I have the I have fake meat, the rubber strips, which I like those two, regular meat, um, and then uh, my fl- regular four-inch flies. And I don't really have long leads on any of my four-inch flies. It's all on my uh, bigger stuff. So if I'm running, normally if I'm running one of those big, huge paddles, it's going to be a vegan rig or a meat rig. We had a question from Chris, but what is a vegan rig? So Chris, a vegan rig, imagine your standard meat rig, like, you know, 54, 60 inch meat rig. But instead of having a bait head on the end, it's got a fly. And and, and the fly, typically it's a five or six inch fly, right, Lucas? Um, you could use four inch flies. I think a lot, of, not a lot of people have five and six inch flies. I think Ryan from ITOs is the only one that does. Um, but when I tie them up, that's what I use is a six inch fly. So I have the two inch teasers, just like a meat rig. And then and where the bait head would be is a, a five or a six inch fly, but you could use four inch as well. Most, and most of the time when you run a vegan rig, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's probably more effective with the bigger power, right? <coughs> just like the big foots, the 10 inch, 11 inch, or the 13 inch. It's probably not as effective yeah. with a smaller eight, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Sorry, I I, uh, I woke up this morning not feeling the greatest, so I'm a little little head snotty today. Tonight. It's very similar but different to actually. I'm going to open this one. I call this one my – I call it the funky fly rig. And what this one is, is and it's similar concept. I actually – so this is long. But what you'll see here is I've got a small peanut fly with um, – I think that's a one-aught hook. And then you go a bit further, and then you've actually got a four-inch fly – with my double octopus so it's a it's a similar concept to this except for you don't have the hooks on the twinkies you just have the three twinkies and then you have the main fly but how same do you idea, keep really. that from being all tied up in your net when you're not a fish <laughs> i can see that I, I as being a nightmare that. i never guaranteed that that doesn't happen but <laughs> you'd be surprised you'd be surprised and this is this rig is mangled so you can see it's taking fish the flash was missing paint <laughs> Um, I would tell you, um, it catches fish and sometimes it's that small teaser that actually they, they bite. So, you know, sometimes you get a, now we're going off topic, you get a meat rig, you get a hit and you're like, but there's nothing there. I personally feel it's because the fish smashed the Twinkie and not the, not the, not, not the meat. No, I, I so don't doubt you and I don't food. even, I don't even think that you're wrong if you said they hit the paddle sometimes too. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I've, been, I've so noticed I, it more when I'm running, when I'm running, um, long lines like down the chute sometimes i'll run a 300 or 10 10 lead core or something down the chute and i've actually watched the rod tip nibble like a like your bullhead fishing you'll watch it take a bite take a bite and it, it might go three four times and then all of a sudden bang off it goes and i'm not sure if they're not swiping it with their tail or if they are hitting the paddle or like you said the meat rigs you know i i don't know what's what exactly is going on down there but i wouldn't doubt anything at this point yeah no absolutely so i uh, got a couple more questions i'll let you start for this what are your considerations if any for spin doctor versus flashers before the fly i normally use spin doctors um with my flies i would say i'm gonna run an e-chip or a square uh, eight inch on one side and then a spin doctor on the other but I have more spin doctors than I have the, the e-chip style. Yeah, so for me, I got a couple of spin doctors. Here's one of mine. This is a, this is one of my custom ones. It's simple, green, black dots, stripe, some holographic with a, I think that's like a hammer fly behind it. <coughs> but if you fish with me, um, you'll find that probably 90% of mine, they're on 8-inch. They're on eight-inch paddles, right? So yeah, eight inches so, my is my normal, unless I'm yeah. running meat rigs. They're on eight inch. Here's a here's another one. Eight inch. Yep. 
eight inch, eight inch. I think you get the point. Like I'm a, I'm an eight inch versus spin doctor guy. That said, I, and I have one, it's not here. I have a, I'm a big fan of a chartreuse double, uh, double crush glow spin doctor, um, with like a green and, uh, a green and chartreuse fly. That one is probably one of my number one spin doctors. I don't have it here right now. I have about four or five of those on the boat. Um, but I find I just have way more success with the eight inch paddle and full honesty and openness. Like as, as many know, I own a tackle company now called project salmon. I have an eight, I do eight inch paddles, right? So, um, it's what I, it's what I've been painting and doing customs for years for customers. And it's what I back to this confidence piece. I am more confident in the, in the eight inch and I've got a lot more selection. I've probably got 50, 60 different styles of eight inch. Um, I've probably got a dozen spin doctors I, that I use on my boat. Um, what yeah, else I, you got I here? Mix I mix and match. I don't, I'm not diehard by any means. Yeah. No, I hear you. Uh, but good question, Vlad. I'd say they both, they both work. There's been, I remember one day I was out and, <coughs> uh, I, and this is, this is, this is a number of years ago before I had my tackle company. Um, I was out fishing with um, 11 inch paddles and eight inch paddles and I could not get a bite, whether it would be meat, whether it be flies. And I remember uh, one other guide, one of the guides, I messaged him back and forth him and he goes, the only thing I can get to work today is a 10 inch spin doctor. I went, really? Literally, I go downstairs at that time, I only on my boat, I literally had like five or 10 10 inch spin doctors. He goes, take a 10 inch spin doctor, throw a fly behind it, throw a meat rig behind it. I did that. Next thing you know, I got, I got rods moving and I, my, my dad and I are catching fish. So it's funny how some days they just want certain things. We can't explain it, but they just want it. Right. So. Nope. Yep. And sometimes it's just one, one setup. It'll be one dipsy or one downrigger. Um, and you can't replicate that anywhere else on your boat. It's just that pole is doing the best job. Uh, yeah. And God only knows what's going on. You could run the same lure on every other pole, the same depth, the same speed and, Still, that one pole will outperform everything. Absolutely. Okay, we got a bunch of really good questions. First one's a quick one. Have you ever tried a moonshine lures tri fly? I don't even know what they're talking about. So, have you, Lucas? Yeah, me neither. No, nope, nope, me neither. Sorry, John. I think the answer is no for both of us. Okay, <clears throat> next. Um, rattles, atomic, or no rattles in your flies? Not sure if someone's already asked a question. So, rattles or no rattles? I use. I mix and match. I have rattles in some. I have the little e-chip thing, which I'm not sure if I believe in it or not, but I use rattles uh, in my and most of mine. But again, I think it depends on the day. Yeah. So I my my view on this is I I, I don't use a lot of rattles, but I I don't think they hurt. I think if anything, they probably help on the fly, because when you got a rattle on the fly, that fly is getting whipped all over the place. I do believe the rattle is actually moving. The only thing is, and, and I was I was talking to the captain about this just last week at our big sportsman show here. If you put a can, if you put a GoPro down, down on, on a downrigger with a twenty foot lead and a flasher, you'd be surprised how much noise that flasher makes in the water. I don't know if the fish can actually hear the rattle, frankly, because the rattles make like very little noise versus the paddle. But then again, I'm not a fish. I don't know. I don't know for sure. My uh, well, same thing is Dwayne. Dwayne's got a question here about sense. I think it's the same thing about that. Um, I think it's a tool for the toolbox. I use Kishel sense, they're out of uh, East Aurora. Um, the reason I started using their fish sense was because I believe it or not, I use their deer hunting sense, and they make a good uh soap to wash your hands after you're cleaning fish, which is real nice too. But I've been using Kishel sense on everything, everything, uh, every flies, paddles, spoons. I, I believe in sense 100%. It's not a cure-all. Again, it's another tool, like a rattle, um, but I don't think it, it hurts. Yeah, I, I agree. And I'm going to talk about, first of all, you mentioned the e-chip. Um, my view, and, you know, people are going to argue with me, <laughs> my view is an e-chip is probably a good thing and a fly. I don't believe in an e-chip on a, on a flasher because when that flasher is rotating, and all an e-chip is is a, is a metal tube with a ball in it. When it's rotating in the same direction the whole time, my opinion, that ball is stuck in the corner. It's not moving. Centrifugal force is holding it in the corner. So I personally don't think an e-chip makes a big deal on a flasher, but I actually think like a, a rattle or, a, or an e-chip, I think it could do something on a on, on a fly. 
because the fly has got a more erratic action where it's darting around. To answer the question about scent or to comment on the sense piece, you know, I use scent too. I'm an Atlas Mike's guy, so I use the herring and the owl wipe. Uh, the other thing I use is I actually use herring oil. So this is actual herring oil. And believe it or not, that you this is made for dogs to feed your dogs and to feed your cats. And that it works just fine. It smells like herring. It is herring oil. You buy it in big containers at, at a pet store or again off of Amazon. And that works really, really well. But the one thing I'd say about scents, um, you got to clean your stuff off afterwards because I find there's nothing worse than a gummed up, especially with flies, especially with tinsel flies. When those things are all nasty and gummed up with um, with scent, you can turn a good rig into a dead dead rig when it's all. Nasty. Yeah, and that's true. That's true. A lot of people don't know that, but that's true of even if you don't use scents. If you're yeah. not using a scent and you catch two or three fish, and let's just say at the end of the day you, you catch a, a, a shaker on one of the lines and you just shake it off, then you put it up and let it dry. That fish scent is now going to be on that fly or on that lure. And it's going to start stinking in the heat. It's going to smell like dead fish when it goes back in the water. So uh, we, before tournaments and uh, every once in a while, I, I use some, again, that Kishel soap, that uh, fish soap. And I just use that. You can use Dawn if you want, but I don't know if there's a scent in there or a UV. I know that the Kishel stuff is good. So I do that with a little toilet brush and just give them a quick wipe, rinse them off. And uh, I would say that that has to happen whether you use scents or not. I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, so we've got one last question for that we both answer, and it's a big question. It's one I wanted to ask anyways. But before I do that, I want to actually ask the question of the night to our viewers. Um, so I'm just typing it in right now. Um, and then that way, as we're answering the next question, we can see all the answers come in for the question of the night. So the question of the night is... Is... What is Captain Mark's favorite hook set when setting up a fly? So what are the what are the what is the favorite hook combination that I use when setting up a fly? So that's the question of the light of the night. Let's see the answers starting to come in. But while oh, we do quick. that, yeah, you know, Vlad's nailed it already. You know, I actually asked it in advance thinking it might take a bit, but Vlad nailed it with the double octopus. <laughs> it took him not even it just took him seconds. Um a lot of people with uh, the double octopus. Lucas's tournament rig, I'm double octopus. Vlad, you are the winner tonight. But with that, we'll ask the last question of the night. And it's a meaty question. And it's very – but a few people will ask a similar question. It's very appropriate because Vlad actually asked this question. So let's say you are fishing late May, early June, sunny day, and you have to pick four attractor fly combos for two riggers and two dipsies, you know, I think he says, you know what the question is. What are your go-tos? What are your go-to um, flash or fly combos? Call it mate, late, mate, late May, early June. Lucas, we'll start with you. All right. So I am the hardest one because I use a spin doctor that's now discontinued called the uh, tranny, which looks like a black back, but it has green sparkles in it um, and then a glow on the other side. Uh, and then anything green and black UV. Um, and then I use ITO flies. My favorite fly is uh, their um, KJ special and then one called the MTT special as well. And that's just because especially with the sun up there, they have a it's like a diamond pressed tinsel. It's very shiny, very bright. Um, and uh, those are my go to at least a couple of my go to ones. And then for two other ones, I always mix and match. I'll throw a, ra a random dark colored one um, out like a purple um and then like i told you earlier white and glow down deep awesome so for me late may early june if the coho are around these little guys are out right <clears throat> so orange with peanut flies either i've got an orange one or i've got you know white with orange dots i don't have many of these on the boat i think about three or four ne you know never lost one probably just jinxed myself right now but you don't need to have a hundred of those. No, four, five, six is going to be more than enough. Um, when it comes to through the season, I'd say my number one, number one fly, like fly rigs. Uh, it's probably number one, number two because we're equally. 
Um, these will be on my 200 and 250 weighted steels almost religiously. Is I call them, uh, I have these on my site, projectsalmon.ca. I call these my slushy. This is a, it's a chrome paddle with like a UV crush with orange or green dots. And I have either a, uh, like a, a stud fly or I have a pickled sunshine behind them. Those would be my two top, top flies, uh, flash of fly combinations. Um, instead of, also instead of the pickle sunshine, if some of the local Canadian guys, I'll put, I think it's a morning glory by hot fish behind them. Those would be, that's one of my combinations. The other one would be, um, again, it's one of my own. It's my, it's my split personality patterns. And I, so here's two of them. So I've got a green and a chartreuse and these are the crushed glow with a holographic <laughs> green, a holographic, uh, chartreuse, same front and back, um, with green and black dots. And then I typically run these, uh, I've got these right now with hot fish. I think the nemesis or the North shore special. Um, I also have that same flash on a white blank with, um, crush glow and UV slick with the same dots. And, uh, similarly, I'll run those with those same two flies. Those flies really are a combination of greens, glows, um, and, and, uh, UV. So those, those yeah, are the colors that's, that's, that's pretty much, again, we, like we said before, you got to come up with your own, uh, combos that you're confident in, but I will tell you nine times out of 10, it's probably going to be green glow UV or green yeah. glow black UV something to that effect yeah. in any those you know, are my go-tos like i have i have right here I, you know this is one of my customs too and it's i don't even know what i call this it's kind of like a, i think it's kind of like a Meg megatron it's uh it's a it's a uv it's a uv crush but i've actually got glow behind so it glows and this is my this is the only one that i've got a, I, that's probably the only mirage fly i have on the boat and it, it works i use it on a very sunny day but I only put that out when the others are not working. To your point, Lucas, if I can, if the greens and the UVs are not working, that's when the straight mirage goes out. But because I'm way more confident in those, uh, in those, uh, in the green and mirage. I think that's uh, that's it for the evening. So lots of uh, lots of great questions. Vlad, you are the winner. Don't forget, folks, to click the like button, click the subscribe button, and. Uh, you know, just a just a, a plug for our friends at Torpedo that do this. Uh, one of their new products this year is actually the Octopus Four Out Hooks. So if you haven't tried either the strongest double octopus hooks on the market, you, what's that? That's the strongest hooks on the market. I yep. can't wait to try them. They're great hooks. If you haven't tried the double octopus <clears> or like <throat> Lucas runs the octopus with a treble, you got to try it. If you're running just a treble hook, you're missing out. You're losing fish, folks. Give these a go. With that, a big thank you to everyone. We I was not expecting us to go 52 minutes talking about f flies. Granted, we did have some hiccups on the technology, but uh, great chatting with everyone. Lots of great questions. Uh, Lucas and I look forward to doing this again and probably next month with you guys. See you all later. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.